Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. Today we have a review for you of Monster Sanctuary. This review was written by a good friend of the channel, Dave Morrish. Dave has his own channel, Save Dex Gaming. I'll put a link to it in the top pinned comment, and I'd really appreciate if you could check it out and show him some support. Monster Sanctuary is a 2D Metroidvania with RPG elements. At a simple look, it seems to have taken some inspiration from Pokemon, and taking a deeper look, I notice plenty of similarities, yet it does put its own spin on things too. But having said that, should you catch them all, or should you not catch this one at all? Well, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now, let's find out. In terms of story, Monster Sanctuary takes place in a world where monsters roam freely, but the peace has been disturbed by the arrival of more powerful monsters. You take control of a monster keeper who sets out on a noble quest to save the day. You begin by selecting a starter monster or spectral familiar as the game calls them. Your choices include a wolf, toad, eagle or lion. They each have special abilities, moves and attributes which I will get into later. I chose the wolf because, well, wolves are awesome. As you would expect from a metroidvania, you have a large world to explore, with certain areas being inaccessible at first, but you can later return to them with new abilities to find new paths and secret areas. You will encounter monsters as you explore, and touching them will trigger a turn-based battle. In true Pokemon style, you don't fight them yourself, you command your monsters to battle in your stead. The battles are always free on free, assuming you have enough monsters, of course, and it's your typical turn-based system in Essentials. You choose the move that you want each monster to perform, select a target, and watch the attack happen. And then of course it's the turn of your opponent. Each monster has certain elements and types, such as water or fire and so forth. Fire-based monsters will be weak to water attacks, but be good against grass types for example. Seeing that you have a new set of creatures and characters to learn and get acquainted with, all the information you need is very helpfully presented to you. When you initiate a battle, it tells you what monsters you are fighting, including what those monsters are strong and weak to. I found this to be very helpful in deciding which troops to use, as being a busy adult these days, long gone are the days where child me could play a similar game such as Pokemon, memorising every single move and advantage that they all had. It's not just attacking that you can do either, there are moves that heal you, raise a shield for your team, or add certain buffs. You can use items, which will count as that monster's turn, and these again can boost health, revive fallen teammates, or exit the battle completely, to name just a few. Each move you do costs mana, the better moves obviously cost you more, and at the end of each turn, you gain some of your mana back automatically. In the top corner there is a combo meter. Some attacks, for example Magma Pillar's Ignite move, will shoot out multiple fireballs at once. The number of hits a move does gets added to that combo meter. The higher the combo, the more damage your next monster's attack will do. This resets after every turn, so you should be encouraged to save your strongest monster until last each turn, so they can do maximum damage. After you win a battle, you gain XP, and when your monsters level up, they earn a skill point which can be used on the skill tree. Every monster you collect has their own individual skill tree. Spending the skill points will let you unlock new moves and power them up. Also, after each battle, your team will be fully healed, which does take off some of the pressure if you're going from fight to fight. Your Spectral Familiar, the one you chose at the start of the game, will be your strongest monster. I mentioned earlier about them having different moves, and I was referring to what your monster can do outside of battle. Each monster has a move that helps you in exploring the world. The wolf and the lion both have claws that let you break hidden walls and cut through vines. The toad has tackle, which breaks walls and moves heavy blocks, and the eagle has flying, which will let you briefly levitate to clear longer gaps. It can be daunting making this decision that will stay with you for the whole game, but when it comes to traversing the game world, you need not worry because all of the monsters you come across and hatch later on will come with their own moves to use in the overworld, and the abilities of the four starters can be performed by these other creatures. To gain new monsters, once you defeat one in battle, there is a small chance they will drop an egg. All you need to do is select it in your inventory, and the monster will hatch, and then it's yours to use. You can only have six monsters in your party at a time, although you can freely swap who is in your party whenever you want. When you get to a battle, you can only choose between the six you have selected at that time, and it will be those six that gain XP from the battle. In the early stages of the game, the battling can be really easy, to the point where I found myself just hitting A repeatedly without any real thought about it. I did worry that this would get monotonous, but luckily the battles did get harder as the game progressed and did require me to slow down and think strategically, although if you do plan on grinding the weaker enemies, there is a very handy option to have the battles play in double speed. The Metroidvania aspect of the game is very well done. 
You have a handy map which shows which rooms you have been to, warp points to get around quicker, and you can choose to talk to your familiar at any time who will remind you of your current objective. You can also gain moves for yourself and not just your monsters, including things such as a double jump. Talking about the controls, well things are simple but effective. B is to jump, Y to use your monsters move, and X brings up your menu. A fair bit of the gameplay will involve menu management, and this all loads fast and is easy to navigate. Pressing a shoulder or trigger button brings up a menu of all of your monsters, and this is how you choose which ones follow you. It works well, but I do wish there was a way to switch between each monster without a menu, just scrolling through them in turn. Maybe if the shoulder button brought up the menu and the trigger scrolled through them quicker, it would have made the game flow a bit smoother, but it is a minor gripe. Gameplay does a good job of bringing that Pokemon style monster raising RPG gameplay into a Metroidvania. It has good battle mechanics, there is plenty of depth and some nice quality of life features to keep things ticking along. The similarities and comparisons to Pokemon are obvious, I mean you can even evolve some of the monsters, but it didn't feel like a rip off to me as it did bring its own ideas. On the whole gameplay gets 18 out of 20. Controls do work really well and although there isn't anything special or unique about them, in a game that has a focus on navigating menus, it does everything it has to do. They score 17 out of 20. In terms of its visuals, the game adopts a pixel art style. I will admit that when I first started playing, the world looked very typical for this type of game. Not bad, but nothing I hadn't seen plenty of times before. There is some variety in the locations which do stand out from each other, and the map conveniently has them colour coded, which helps you find your way around. The backgrounds are nicely detailed, if you look in the cave areas for example, there are holes in the wall and there appears to be a multiple layered background behind it which gives some sense of depth and world building. There are some really nice lighting effects used too, whenever you encounter places where you have torches on the wall for example, it will get lighter or darker depending on where you go. These are nice little details that didn't need to be here but do certainly add to the game. The main attraction for any game like this though of course is the monsters. There is a lot of variety in these monsters and you'll encounter a lot of fun designs. A variety of different colours have been used to make them stand out and they are easily recognisable from each other. You can tell they had a lot of fun with some of them, such as Cat Zerka basically being Puss in Boots with a huge sword. It is a bit of a shame that most of the time you'll see them in pixel art form but you do eventually get yourself a monster journal which allows you to see them in greater detail. In terms of the audio, the music is varied and does change from area to area, and I like the way it seemed to build you up for an adventure. When in the village it has quite a calming ambience, but when you approach things like caves, it does take on quite a sinister tone. There are several different battle themes that can play, although some of the earlier ones were perhaps a bit too calming, given the context of what was happening, but other times the battle music really did get me pumped for battle. The sound effects have a retro charm to them and you'll hear the zaps and slashes you'd expect in this sort of battle game. Visuals are presented well with a nice art style that isn't anything too special but there is some good attention to detail, decent animations and I enjoyed the monster styles. They score 15 out of 20. Audio does use a fair few tracks and the sound effects are decent although I'm not sure they will stick in my head for any sort of time after playing and it scores 14 out of 20. Monster Sanctuary costs £15.99, $19 or €19.99 or $28 Australian dollars 95 If you are watching this video around launch time though, there is a 10% discount up until the 15th of December. This is a very good price for what the game is, not only are you getting an adventure that will take most people anywhere between 20 to 35 hours, but there is a lot of depth to the game's mechanics. There are secrets to uncover and there are 101 monsters to find. There's also plenty of customization. first of all through choosing your spectral familiar, but then of course with that skill tree for each of your monsters. It gives you a lot of scope to change how your game plays on a second playthrough. Plus finally there is the Keeper's Tower that lets you take on battle challenges, so the game gives you plenty to do and clearly has been given a lot of care and attention. Value scores 18 out of 20. To conclude, Monster Sanctuary is a very fun and addictive metroidvania where the RPG turn-based battles kept me engaged with the experience. It has a really nice balance between the two elements and adds some great quality of life features to boot. Of course it borrows elements from Pokemon, that's plain to see, but as I mentioned earlier, it does this while introducing new mechanics of its own. And all of this comes of course as a very decent price. Monster Sanctuary gets a switch up score of 82%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did, 
a big thank you to Dave for writing this one for us. Please do check out his channel and give him some support over there. The link is in that top pin comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support. And to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.